Um, so let's start with the detailed um, of how to quantify the calculations for stress and strain in BIM. And the <coughs> in this uh, semester, the fundamental mechanism material, we are going to study the bending of BIM, which only have symmetric cross sections. Okay, we call the symmetric beams. And a beam with a symmetric uh, cross section basically indicating in this figure. So if this is the length, longitudinal uh, direction of the beam is, and in which a pure bending applied to this beam, basically under this loading application, the beam going to curve up. So curve up, basically, this is on the front beam. Then the bending applied to this, and the curve up will be the beam will be curved up like this. Okay, and curve down on the other side. If we would have the opposite direction of the moment, and there's a curve down. So symmetric bending basically have the cross section that is symmetric respect to the y axis. Okay, as indicated here. So symmetric cross section can be uh, trapezoidal. Uh, rectangular or square, uh, triangular, or even the common practical, the industry based standard I beam, H beam, or W beams. Okay, those one uh, you should be able to find more uh, information in appendix C. Okay, they <coughs> have more information about those kind of the, the I beam, uh, W beams. Um, I think also have S bin, etc. Those ones are very practical kind of the uh, specifications of the different uh, standard beams here. And the other possibility is this kind of the, I would say, C shape, okay, and that is the Y direction, this is the longitudinal, okay. So those are the examples of what we call the symmetric beam. Symmetric beams, basically, they are, they have the symmetric, uh, the cross sections, okay. <coughs> So those are the topics be covered in this section here. And any non-symmetric beams won't be discussed in this class. Okay, and if you'll be interested, and you can try to look for my videos uh, on the inter in, uh, indeterminate mechanical material, which is the different class, and other than this one, but here. and. So let's uh, let, uh, take a look at the symmetric beams in more detail. So basically that is the, what I'm saying here. And basically our focus is to study the pure bending applied to symmetric beams. So again, similar to our previous example here, the only in portion BC that is under pure bending, okay? And then for portion BC that is under pure bending and assuming the BC, is the, the whole beam is symmetric, so that is a case we study here, okay? And <clears throat> so again, this we've been talking about earlier. So in this section around the point C here, that section doesn't, is not under pure bending because we know in this section that's only, not only have uh, the reaction moment, but also have the vertical reaction force here. So that's a different topic. We're going to address this one in the uh, in the later uh, sections uh, shortly. Okay, not in this section here, but again, remind this is about the what we call the eccentric. Loading. Okay, so not covered in this section. Um, so here, let's start with the formulations of <coughs> how to describe the deformation of the beam. And actually, uh, didn't, although uh, didn't indicate it in our textbook, but actually this is we are going over, it's called the Bernoulli beam theory. And this beam theory basically assumed that, okay, and the assumption is that, okay, in this undeformed beam, this is the <coughs> the the front view, okay, and this is the y directions. Uh, this is the vertical is the y direction here, okay. And if a moment will be applied, the moment will be applied to to bend uh, the beam like this one, okay. So let me erase this unnecessary <coughs> uh, note here, okay. 
So here uh, that is undeformed and on the surface of an undeformed bin we make a few marks and that has the horizontal marks and I, I call it fiber, okay, basically fiber or, or mark. And then in the vertical one, uh, normal to the horizontal fiber, and I also make the vertical fiber or vert vertical uh, mark here. So basically, the one I made is they basically perpendicular to each other. So that is the preparation. And then once we have a, a moment applied, for example, for this pair of the moment, we try to curve the beam up. Okay, <clears throat> so with this one uh, in place, then I'm going to talk about the assumption. The assumption is this, for any initially uh, vertical uh, fibers that is perpendicular to the horizontal fibers, after such a deformation, we still assume <coughs> those fibers locally still uh, normal to the horizontal fiber, okay? No, I would say locally, still 90 degrees. And so that means under these situations, and we will, we can, uh, we can prove initially this is the uh, strain line, and after deformation, this still remain as a strain line, okay? And it won't be like a the, the tort, the distorting like this, no, okay? So again, this is the additional, the initial strain line and after such a bending, curving up and that will remain a strain line. So that is the, <coughs> the first assumption. The second one is furthermore, we can also approve for all the uh, vertical fibers, they actually, they are pointing to a common point. Okay, so if you extend those lines they will intersect at the common point okay so let me try to do one to uh, try to draw uh, draw one on one so this common point is called the center of the curvature okay and actually the center of a cur curvature is the uh, the the center i mean all the horizontal fibers under the curve up uh, look the the applications the the application of the of the moment all the horizontal horizontal fibers, they actually they will be curved. They will be curved uh, as the uh, part of the circular uh, per parameters here. Okay, so basically all those kind of uh, horizontal uh, fiber, they basically uh, a portion of the circular shape. Okay, and those circles basically have a common center here and we call the center of the curvature. So basically that means all the curve, all the fundamental curve here. Let me uh, erase this one here. All the uh, horizontal fibers, they basically they have the same center Okay, so that is the, they, they have the same the center is here, and then all the fibers, horizontal fibers, they have the same as uh, the, the curvature, and then basically Sharon has the center of the curvature here. So this, basically this one pointing to all the curve, all the horizontal fibers being curved up and with the common center of the curvature, basically that is pointing to the Bernoulli beam theory. And if the beam is not to follow the assumption of this Bernoulli beam theory that saying those assumptions we just described, for example, locally uh, remain 90 degrees, and also the common of the center of curvature, those assumptions will be violated, okay? So, <coughs> so that is the, uh, the assumptions we made here. And you may wonder why we want to apply this uh, kind of strong assumptions. The reason is simple. Those one you will see shortly in the following slides that will allow us to derive a very easy descriptions of the stress and strain. Okay, and that is a starting point of uh, here we study from a fundamental mechanics of material. And of course, any non Bernoulli beam theory and can be further derived and by releasing those assumptions. And those one will be studied in the advanced mechanics of material, but not here. Okay. <coughs> 
so um, again we move on to um, to further uh, describe what's going on in a deformed beam and under the Bernoulli beam theory and but from here let us right now in this slide focus on the horizontal fiber okay so initially uh, for this case one two three four five five horizontal fibers they basically have the same length L okay and then under the application of the bending is going to curve up for this example for this illustration here so once curve up the AB this on the top and A prom B prom that is a bottom here. They all going to have curve up and they both basically they have a same common center here. Okay. And then under this case the A B is get shortened, B kind of compressed and A B A prom B prom at the bottom basically going to be stretched. Okay. So at the top of the <coughs> the portion here this a b gets shortened so basically that the length of a b is decreased okay so in this case the after deformation the a b uh, get shortened a prong b prong get uh, longer stretched so in continuous transition from top to down which means from shorter shortened to uh, to stretch from negative to positive in between they must have a fiber that experiencing zero deformation okay because here on the top when the fiber gets uh, gets get compressed gets shortened so that is negative and we use a negative to indicate it gets shortened in the fiber length and at the bottom one a prom b prom get a uh, stretch so the, let me use the sign positive to indicate the length get longer so transition from the top to down here from negative to positive they must experience a zero there so this particular fiber as i indicated by the blue line this blue line and here for example that blue line in the original uh, on the form shape could be somewhere here okay and just schematically draw it okay so this particular fiber they basically experience no deformations and before and after the bending applied this fiber if we put into a three-dimensional drawing here so let me put the uh, beam into the three-dimensional uh, model okay so that fiber this is the particular fiber that is uh, has zero uh, deformation uh, zero deformation that means the no deformations that means the no deformation here so for this fiber let me extend it into three dimensional so basically that constitute is a plane okay so this fiber in front view uh, is like blue line but in three dimensional actually constitute a plane this plane is called a neutral surface okay and neutral surface definition of the neutral surface is that any horizontal fibers in the neutral surface and they experience no deformations and when moment apply okay and then the what is the neutral axis if right now uh, if you have if you are the small guys and say you're sitting in this kind of longitudinal axis and looking and into this cross section here okay so on that cross sections this um this is the vertical y-axis and this is the z-axis okay so the intersections of the neutral surface to this particular cross section here and this <coughs> is the intersection between the cross section and the neutral surface this is what we define as a neutral axis okay neutral axis is the intersections of the neutral surface with a cross section in indicated here okay so here that is the definitions of the new uh, two new terms and the two terms play a very important role in uh, in these chapters okay so um, again if you want to get more rewind the videos and to pick up the definitions of the neutral surface and neutral axis here.
<coughs> so now um, we will move on to get more quantitative uh, description about the deformations. The first one, let's look at uh, how how to describe the deformation and how to quantify a mathematics uh, to describe the deformation here. <coughs> so again, we look at undeformed uh, beam, and this is front view, and if any moment going to apply, the moment going to apply to curve for illustration purpose, say the moment going to curve up the beam, something like the bottom one showing here, okay. So here to quantify the deformation, I in particular pick up two fibers. One fiber is JK, okay, and with the dashed line here. The other fiber is DE, okay, and DE particularly, DE is on the neutral surface here, okay. DE is a fiber in the neutral surface. And uh, which means the after deformations, the DE will remain its length per definition of the neutral surface. And JK fiber, uh, because it lies above the neutral surface, so once this beam is curved up, then JK will be deformed, will actually uh, <coughs> uh, from the concept previously, you can say okay, basically will be shortened a little bit. Okay, so now let's uh, quantify the deformation here. So using this notation, let me introduce. And again, the C is the center of the curvature. And say a uh, DE fiber, it once curved, it has the radius of a curvature. Let me define the row here. So basically the distance from the fiber DE to the center C is rho. Okay, and let me also be uh, be, param be parametric. D uh, J K this fiber basically is located at a distance y above the uh, neutral surface here, so indicated by this one. Okay, so in our corner system, we place the y in the in the vertical directions. Okay, and the origins we place our origin in the neutral surface. Okay, and x direction indicating is the uh, longitudinal direction of the beam. So that is a common uh, corner system uh, being placed in study of the beam here. Okay, so now we're back to our study here. So the fiber JK is at the location y above. So that means the distance from JK uh, to the center C here basically is the whole length which measure from here to here, that is rho minus y. So basically, the distance between the fiber JK and this fiber to center is the rho over y. Okay, so keep everything ready. And now for this particular illustrations, and for example, the length, if we pick of the segment is L, so after the curving up, they going to spin uh, angle theta, Okay, theta can be related to L, and we're going to uh, talk about later uh, shortly. Okay, so now we can study the the deformations. Basically, the concept of the deformations, and if you remember, uh, in our chapter two, we studied this is the undeformed lens. Okay, so say the undeformed lens is L, then after deformations is going to be change in dimension, let me call the delta here. So delta basically is to measure the, so this is the after deformations. So this is the undeformed. So basically the deformation simply is a comparison between the dimensions and after deformation and before the deformation. So that is what we call the delta, the deformation here. The apply the same concept here. <coughs> so we compare the fibers JK and DE, okay? So for fiber JK before deformed, it has the length L as given here, the same thing DE, this has the same 
length L. Then after uh, the deformation, then we see and DE, and that is on neutral surface, is undeformed. So, but on the other side, the DE uh, basically uh, using this portion, D, are you able to see D is the uh, a portions of a circle, and that's uh, that's uh, D span the theta. So basically, rho times theta basically equal to length of the D E here. So D E equal to rho of theta. That information is obtained by looking at this circular shape. But on the other side, the DE is on a uh, neutral surface, is undeformed. So rho theta equal to L. So that is the information will build up the relation between theta and L here. Okay. On the other side, <coughs> the uh, JK, this fiber JK after deformed is how much in the similar way. The JK, if we look at this uh, circular arc, that actually equal to the radius rho over y, uh, rho minus y minus theta here. Okay, so basically this calculated is based upon the circular length. Okay. So now uh, we can compare uh, for the deformation of the JK. Okay, so JK is deformed by, uh, again using this concept, the deformation basically is the, by definition, is the, the dimension after deformed minus the dimension before deformed, okay, using this concept. So this is the, the deformed length of the JK, this is undeformed length. So we simply do the algebra, we found it's minus y theta here. And on the other side, and I want to replace the theta with this relation. So basically here the theta equal to rho over L, okay. Uh, Sorry, the theta, sorry, upside down. The theta equal to L over rho here, okay. <coughs> so uh, um, in this case, the um, this one I can replace, but let me erase a little bit information here. So let me continue to write it up. With this relation, basically this one can be written by minus Y L over rho, okay. So that is the deformations in JK fiber, okay? And that is the deformation, then we can say basically that deformation of the fiber, then if we want to determine the strain in JK, if you remember that the strain from this our fundamental uh, situation, we know the strain equal to deformation divided by original length. That is our chapter two concept, the same thing. And this one basically is equal to JK divided by original length, just like we did here. Okay, so that is a string. String in JK equal to this number, and we proceed those calculations JK, and <coughs> so this one, uh, let me not only look for this one, so basically this one, by producing this one is minus Y over rho, okay? So this quantity divided by L equal to minus Y over rho. So this representing is the strain in fiber JK, and actually that strain is the strain in this direction, okay? In this direction, and that direction actually is in X directions here. So the reason why I put the label and epsilon X, this representing is the, the strain in X direction, that representing is called the longitudinal strain in X direction. Okay, so again, here let's uh, summarize uh, before we move on to the slides. So right now, once we have the beam curving up, then at any uh, fiber distance at y here, the strain equal to minus y over rho here, okay? So this is the um, description again, we can, uh, uh, <coughs> That is the uh, my old slide from my lecture note. If you have a copy from the blackboard, you should have this page. So they basically they saying the same thing. And for this one, let me reinforce the concept one more time. And to obtain the strength uh, in CD, I simply compare his original length and to uh, his the length after deformations, and then I calculate the deformations and given to this one and divide the deformation by length and that one 
divide the original as I divide the deformation by his original length and I obtain the A is this string. Okay. <coughs> So this strain basically uh, is a function of two things. One is a function of rho, that is the radius of the curvature uh, <coughs> of a fiber on the neutral axis. And why that is a parametric um, number, and why basically depends on which level you pick your fiber CD. You can be higher or you can be lower, so basically that y is the number you pick. Okay, so under these situations, and then you can see the strain basically is proportional to a constant, and that is rho also proportional to the y, linearly proportional to the location y here. So basically here, this page uh, summarizes what we done um, so far here, and here we talk about is the normal strain we've been derived and the normal strength is in the x direction, so that is in x direction. So let us try to uh, illustrate th the distribution of the normal strength just like this. So here basically we pick up it, this kind of this portion here, okay? So I pick up this portion for demonstration like this one here. So again, we place our origins on the neutral surface and y vertically and longitudinal, this is the x direction. So the here we have described is the normal strain. The normal strain that basically representing is the about the deformation of the fibers in that direction. So that is normal to this cross section here, okay? So here we describe at any fibers, and for example, this fiber is the fiber JK here, okay? So this is a fiber JK, fiber JK. So fiber JK located at Y above, so that is a function of Y. <coughs> okay, let me erase unnecessary information. I don't want to mess up these things here. So here, um, you pick up any locations, the strain is in proportional to Y, and then this minus uh, basically is indicating all the fibers on the top, on the, the curving up um, situations, the material of the beam above the neutral surface will be in compression, okay? And that indicating this, but this strain is negative, the indicating gets shortened in length. So, for this case, curving up, okay, curving up like this shape, or the upper portion will be in compression. On the other side, for curving up uh, the beam, the any material below the neutral surface will be in tension. The strain get positive, the deformation get elongated, the stress getting tensored. Okay, so that is a summary. And take home message from this slide uh, has two. One is we place our uh, coordinate system such that origin is on the neutral surface. If you want to look at from the cross section side or from this front view side, we place our origin in the neutral surface here, the neutral axis here. And here is our y uh, coordinate, okay? And for this cross section view, the x direction is out of the papers, okay? Indicating that is the longitudinal uh, direction. So that is the first uh, piece to take home. That means the placement of the Cartesian corner systems. The second piece is this. The distributions of the normal strain, or sometimes we call the bending strain, bending, bending strain. And the distribution of the bending strain is linear. Okay, linear, uh, proportional to the location of Y here. Y basically is measured from the, uh, based upon our corner system placement here. Okay. The third piece is this. By for this example, if a beam is curved up like these situations, okay, and if this is the neutral surface, then for this case, the any material in the portions above the neutral surface will be in compressions, and any material below the neutral surface will be in tensions. And on the other side, if the beam is going to curve down, 
like this okay and then this again this is the neutral surface then for this case any material about the neutral surfaces surface will be in tension and in any material uh, below the neutral surface will be in compression so that is the third piece and you need to take home from these slides and those one keep those things in mind that will help uh, later more quantitative analysis <coughs> and once we learned the distribution of this string then apply Hooke's law then we uh, directly multiply with Young's modulus E then we can basically translate all the information we learned about the distribution of the stress so again the stress is in linear uh, distributions okay and so basically the the zero stress is at any point in the neutral surface and then for this curve up again for materials, the member for the beam is being curved up, and again, this is the neutral surface. Then any material above, any material point above the neutral surface is in compressions, and at the bottom is in tension. So for this case, I, let me ask you, where is the maximum? Where is the maximum? Um, the normal stress. What is where is the maximum compressive normal stress is here? At the top surface, the maximum compressive occurred, and then uh, where is the maximum tensile stress? Then that is here, and the maximum tensile stress occurred here. Okay. And on the other side, if we have the beam is being curved down like this. Okay, and so again, this is the neutral surface here. Then again, let me ask you, where is the maximum compressive stress, which is here? Okay, that is where the maximum compressive, because for any material under the neutral surface is the any material point is under compressions. And again, the upper portion is in tension, and then the top side, top surface will be the maximum tensions for this case. Okay, and so again, for this page, those figures are your take home, those ones are your take home message. And in addition to the distribution of the bending stress is linear is linear in the location of a Y where the fiber you want to look at here, okay? And the third piece is no, uh, the stress is zero in the neutral surface. So those are kind of the important uh, information and then uh, seems we're still not able to calculate the numbers and but here we have more qualitative information, we're almost there. And so before we move on, let me ask you why we are still not able to determine the numbers uh, of the stress. For example, let me ask you, are we able to determine the stress at this point for this illustration? Okay, at this point, the stress basically is given by this formula. And Young's modulus is material properties usually based upon design we are given and why what is why why is the locations for example i pick this point so basically why is the numbers i can decide on my own so why is determined and now come to the question here what is rho here <coughs> what is this number do you remember what is rho and we can look at the rho again what is this uh, number here the rho, if you look at this slide, rho is this one. Rho indicating is the radius of the curvature of the fiber DE. And fiber DE is a fiber in the neutral axis. So basically rho is certain quantity that is a curvature, radius of a curvature. And this radius curvature actually uh, is regarding, uh, related to the magnitude of the bending. So before we are able to decide the magnitude, determine to calculate the magnitude of the stress, we need to answer this question, what is rho? What is rho? 
and rho again is regarding uh, relating to our magnitude m here. So keep these things in mind. We right now we're almost there, and we are uh, almost there to to calculate. But we need to answer the question: What is rho? <coughs> um, to answer the questions, the rho can be. Um, uh, those one will be more quantitative uh, one, and um, to answer what is role, we probably we will start with the uh, very detailed uh, calculation starting from the equilibrium equations here. Okay, <coughs> and here we apply the equilibrium because this is in general a three-dimensional case, so we apply the equilibrium in. Uh, the forces, the force in three directions, x, y, z, and the moment in x, y, z. Okay. Uh, let us uh, take a look at the, the individual uh, components one by one. So the first one, uh, x direction. So that means we look at this direction here. So the f the surface integral of the stress over the cross-sectional area. And because must be equal to zero, this representing is the surface integral of these uh, distributed uh, stress, and must be equal to zero because externally we don't apply any loading in any force in x direction. So externally we don't have any external force applied in x direction. So surface integral from the force from the stress must be equal to zero. Okay. And in the y directions, again, we don't apply externally uh, any loading in y direction. And also from the analysis, they don't have such reactions, which means the, the stress in y direction. So it's normally equal to zero and that, and the same thing in the z direction. Okay. So now uh, we move on to um, <coughs> the moment. So the moment, again, we uh, look at this term first, okay. So what is this one? So let me explain. And this one basically is our normal stress, sigma x, okay. The sigma x multiply with this small area here. So if, say, this, let me put into three-dimensional joint here, okay. So that is the uh, cross-section. So this is the dA, so this small strip is dA. The magnitude of the normal stress multiplied with the small strip multiplied with the small strip equal to uh, small force. Okay. This small force multiplied with this arm. Okay. A small force that being applied in this small strip multiplied with this arm basically that we're going to contribute is a, a moment, a little small moment here. Okay. So this force multiplied with this arm uh, equal to a little moment. Okay, let me use dm. And actually, this moment is about the z. Z is out of the board. Okay, out of the board. So this is a moment about z. So all the other small force uh, at every location they're going to contribute a small moment. So everything taken together, so basically we're taking the, the surface integral, they basically will be equal to the moment uh, in the z directions. And here we apply the moment here. If you apply the right hand rule and using your four fingers, okay, using your four fingers, circulating the direction of the m and your thumb, and pointing to you is pointing to the z direction here. Okay, so so the summation of the reactions and must be in equilibrium with any externally applied moment and in the z direction applied is m here. Okay, so basically here is what are we formulated. And then we look at the other two directions and we don't apply any moment in x and y direction and we don't have any reaction and in x and y direction. So basically the two are naturally equal to zero here. Okay. <coughs> so um, so here the useful information for us is this piece and this piece. And Using the two pieces will allow us to determine our question: What is rho here? Okay, 
and <coughs> so we tend to move on. Um, um, on the other side, um, I don't know whether you have um, um, uh, memorized and uh, not memorized, and we can look at this one here. And here we right now we uh, still have a clue in determine the row here. Okay, so we still know don't know this one. And on the other side, I kind of remind you. And what is why? Why basically when we going to determine the sigma x, maybe we can move on to this previous page here. So when we determine the y, and I said the y simply is depends on the we choose because here I choose, I chose, I want to calculate the stress at this position. So I pick out the y here. So let me ask you, what is y? Okay, you can answer me. Y simply is the distance from the origin to where, wherever the location we are interested. Yes, you are right. However, what is the origin here? I said the origin of the corner system is placed on the neutral surface. Good. Okay, you still remember this point. And then, where is the neutral surface? Neutral surface, as I mentioned, and that is here. And we move on to the previous few slides here. And using this this note, and I say that the neutral surface basically is in a, a particular surface where the fibers experience no deformation. That is in transition from negative, in this illustration, is from negative to positive deformation that's in between. Okay, and then again here I say we place our uh, corner systems um, origin in the neutral surface X Y Z. So here I haven't uh, answered the question where exactly this neutral surface locate. I only have said so. The neutral surface happened in between. That is in transition from the top to bottom surface, but not exactly where. I haven't told you that yet. So, so keep those things in mind. Actually, here we still have two questions. This one, although we can determine the y, however, y is measured from the neutral surface. So the second question is the neutral surface. Okay, so right now we keep in mind, and actually our questions come to here. This kind of the in mind is not only to answer what is the row, uh, the radius of the curvature, but here we want to answer where the neutral surface is. So that is a big question so far in this slide. Okay. Um, so before we move on, I kind of get a little uh, peek on these next next sections. So let me remind again here because the concept is important. I want to just reinforce before I stop here. So here, rho is the radius of curvature regarding the neutral surface here. Okay. Then the second one, we still uh, need to know where the location of the neutral surface exactly where the neutral surface locates in the beam. So that's a big question we have. And before we move on to um, the uh, new section here, I'd like to reinforce uh, the, the directions of the loading. Okay, so here again, uh, here I just want to indicate because sometimes I still want to use the double arrow sign for moment or torque uh, related moment. Okay, so for this case, again, here if you apply the right hand rule, so let me draw my, my the, a hand uh, carefully. So this is a hand, if you apply the four fingers, and align to the circulation of this moment, okay? And then uh, then, then your uh, thumb will be pointing to the directions. Uh, that direction basically is the direction of the, de the double arrow uh, sign here, okay? So basically, this is a moment. So if you like, you can draw it in just like in our textbook or otherwise if you like to use a double arrow sign then basically for this case the double arrow sign is pointing to the z direction here okay and i can tell you and sometimes using double arrow sign will be uh, clear and uh, you will see okay so keep this in mind so that is uh, my last uh, topic uh, the, the last uh, point before we move on to the new sections